Hi everybody, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound. If you're into music technology at all, you're probably familiar with a couple of music programs called Mainstage and Ableton Live. And I use both of those every week. I use Mainstage for keyboard sounds and I use Ableton Live to play back uh, backing tracks and loops. Uh, and I've been using them for a long time and I'm pretty good with both of them now. One of the most difficult things to figure out with both of them was to um, get a handle on how I could make them work for me and what kinds of systems could I use um, to make sure that I wasn't spending a ton of time every week setting them up and spending all of my focus on the technology when I was trying to perform or lead worship. And uh, one of the things that I've done with my uh, Mainstage keyboard course is to set it up so not only do you know how to use the program, but you can use it in a way um, that's quick and efficient and, and works well for you. And uh, in this video, what I want to do is show you something that I've just started doing within the last few weeks. And this is something that's kind of streamlined uh, how I perform with it. And it makes things a little bit easier. It gives me one less thing to think about. And that is controlling patch changes in ma main stage, switching uh, keyboard sounds um, just by changing the loops in Ableton. So usually um, I have a, a 25 key MIDI controller, keyboard controller. I'll, I'll press one of the keys to trigger different tracks or loops in Ableton, and then I'll change patches using these drum pads on my Akai LPD-8. And so a lot of times I would set things up so I would switch to a different loop and then I would switch to a different um, keyboard sound at the same time. Um, but I found a way to streamline that a little bit. So let me show you uh, how that works. So um, over in this part, you're seeing uh, my main stage patch list. Over here, you're seeing everything that's happening in Ableton Live. So let's say I'm going to start out. Well, first of all, note that I'm on this patch right now, but I'm going to play this song. So you see that the patch changes up here, and then I can just go ahead and play this song. And then when I'm ready to go to kind of the next dynamic of the song, I would have done two things. I would switch the loop and I would switch the patch. But now what I'm going to do is just select the different loop. And one, two, three, and then that changes my patch. And then I can do the same thing again to go to the loudest section of the song. Now, I knew this functionality was available for a long time, but again, it was just about finding a system that made sense to me and worked for the way that I use it. So I realized that I was setting up a lot of my loops, and I, I, I tend to use loops more now as opposed to tracks that go all the way through a given song. Loops allow you to a lot more flexibility to um, repeat sections as you desire in the, in the midst of a performance or a song. And um, I realized that I was setting up basically a soft loop, a medium loop, and a loud loop, and then uh, kind of a, an ending loop as well. And that was how I was setting up my main stage patches as well. I set them up for you know a soft setting, a medium setting, a loud setting, and then something to play at the end. And so it worked well together. If I can just join those two, then that's one less thing that I have to change as I'm going through the performance. So um, let me show you how I get this set up. To get our system set up to receive patch change messages from Ableton, we need to work in three different places. The first place we need to work is Audio MIDI Setup. So I always just type in to Spotlight Audio MIDI and it comes up. Now, this is the MIDI devices um, window. If that's not showing, go to Window and uh, select the MIDI window. We need to enable something here, and that is this IAC driver. So just double click on it click devices online, and then that's all we need to do. We've enabled that driver, so it's good to go. And then we're gonna go, the next place we need to look is in Ableton, and we're gonna open up the live preferences. From there, we need to make sure we click on the MIDI sync tab. And now, since that IAC driver is enabled, we now see uh, an option for that input, and also for the output. The output is where we wanna look, and we're just going to enable um, these different output options. Now we need to set up MIDI clips that are going to sp send specific patch changes to out to main stage. So let's go up to create. We'll select insert MIDI track. I'm just going to scoot this over. 
I'm going to double click in the first slot to create a new MIDI clip. Okay, so here's my new MIDI clip. And when I've done that, it's going to open up this uh, little inspector item down here. And under notes, you can see this program field. And I'm going to change this to one. I just typed in one and enter. So now this MIDI clip is sending a program change to program number one for this clip. Okay. Now for this channel, I need to set the output also to go to the right place. So I'm going to set MIDI to IAC driver. Okay, and then we're on channel one. Um, so now when I click on this scene, it's going to send this program change to um, a, a patch change, and it's going to send it out over the IAC driver to main stage. Okay, I'm going to um, hide this in and out options. Okay, now what I'm going to do is duplicate this. And you can go up and do that through the edit menu or just press command D. Um, I'm going to leave this as um, number one down here because the way I set up my Ableton tracks, I always set up uh, an empty MIDI clip just so I can start the tempo if I want to start the tempo and the, the metronome going without actually starting any audio playback. So these are going to be both going to the first, um, that soft patch change in main stage. I'm going to duplicate this again. And now I'm going to set this to go to the medium. Um, so I'm going to set it to program two. Okay. And that didn't go right. So <laughs> try that again. All right. Now I'm going to duplicate that. Set this one to three. And one more time. I'm going to set this to four. Okay. Now. Uh, I'm, I pretty much finished this setup, at least for this first song. So when I click on this first scene, which is kind of the soft loop, it's going to send um, program number one. On this one, it's going to the medium is going to send program number two. On the loud, it's going to send program number three. And on this ending loop or softer loop, um, it's going to go to program number four. So now I need to tell main stage which programs those are. So in my patch list, I have my soft patch for this first song. This is the what I want to play for program one. So come down here, make sure you're under patch settings that attributes is selected. Click program change and then make sure it's set to one. Over here on, on our medium patch, I'm going to change the program to two, three, and four. And I'm going to do the same for these other ones. Five. And 12. Okay, so now I can be on any one of these patches. And when I come back to play this scene, you can see that it switches my patch to that first one. And then I go to the medium one, and the patch change happens in main stage. All right, a couple things about this system. One is that make sure when you're setting up your patch numbers in main stage, make sure you're not, you don't have the same number assigned to more than one patch. Okay. Or if you do just make sure um, that you, uh, for example, say you don't want to do patch changes for this one, just uncheck the program change box. So you don't have any conflicting uh, messages happening there within main stage. The other thing is to keep in mind that when you change your loop in Ableton, uh, you can press the button, but it's going to wait until that next downbeat to actually change the scene that you're on, which means that it's also going to wait till the ne next downbeat or the next measure to send that MIDI message, that program change message. And so uh, once that happens, then uh, there's maybe just a tiny, tiny bit of delay um, when that patch change actually happens, which means it, especially if you play that next chord a little bit early, it's not necessarily going to catch the new sound. Okay, so it might be louder or softer than what the rest of the section is going to be like. So just be aware that 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 patch change might happen just slightly after you play your first notes, which means that it might just take uh, until your next note uh, to kick in. So um, you'll get a feel for that timing as you work with it. But um, again, it's just about finding a system that works for you. And I, I like this soft, medium, loud um, setting. And uh, there's some more videos on here about how I set up my main stage 
patches that way. It, it's worked really well for me, and it's really easy to keep track of in my head. So, um, and again, I have the main stage keyboard course available. That's it's just meant to be an efficient way to use main stage. Um, it'll help you set it up in a way that doesn't take a, to a ton of, of time every week, uh, and it'll help you get to the place where you can not only get set up, but you can play smooth performances and add a lot to your keyboard sound. So I encourage you to check that out. It's going to save you a lot of time if you're getting started with main stage. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, one more thing. If you want to download a template uh, for Ableton Live that has this stuff in it, it has all these uh, scene changes already programmed in so you don't have to do this every time, you can go to OurWorshipSound.com. Um, there will be a link in the in the video here. Um, just go ahead and follow that. So I forgot to the end to mention that. But anyway, uh, I'll make that available. Just put in your email address once you get to the website, and uh, you can download that for free. So. Hope that helps you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.